Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and this is the start of a new reading vlog and this morning I went back to work, it's now Tuesday lunchtime, it's the 10th of January and yeah it's my first day back at my part-time job. I have a few different worky things happening this week so I'm going to take you along with me as those happen so that you can kind of get a bit more of an insight into what I do for work which sounds like it'll be boring. There's escape rooms and stuff tomorrow and a few meetings and an event this week. It's not kind of my what I do for work video because I think I'm going to make that separately and if you've got any questions about what I do for work, well you may have some more after you've seen this or you may have some additional ones that this one sparks then let me know in the comments down below and I'll put that into that video. Anyway, waffling on, like I said it's Tuesday the 10th of January, back to work. I was tidying my desk like a madman at eight o'clock so I wanted to start early this morning as I knew I had an early meeting and you know when you're back after a break I've been off for almost four weeks and I had quite a lot of like not anxiety exactly but I was a bit like oh god how many emails am I gonna have I know I want to get that done before I get into a meeting and there's anything I need to read before that meeting etc and so yeah eight o'clock had a mad one but the office is in a real state because back in December I pretty much shut the door on it and haven't opened it since <laughs> so yeah I'll insert a little bit of footage now so that you can see how bad it is because what I want to go and do after I finish just having this quick catch up with you is go and sort that room out because it's not the nicest working environment. Also the bookshelves need a real sort because all of the books down there are books that I read and so all the books that have been hovering around up here waiting for my best of 2020 to or possibly for a December or November haul that I never ended up doing have all gone downstairs now so they need to find their new homes. I only keep books that I either really loved or have some specific random link to me. I don't, I feel like a lot of people keep books because they think they're going to reread them. I'm not a big rereader, I just like to have them just in case. It's almost like the history of my reading highlights on one set of shelves, that's how I see it. Anyway, that is that. I am between books, which is both a lovely feeling because it's like, oh, what can I read next? But also like, oh, what am I reading? Don't know if you feel the same about that. However, two books arrived in the post today and one of them may be my next read. It's not this first one, but I wanted to mention what I've got. Uh, first of all, I was sent the hero of this book by Elizabeth McCracken. Hey, I think it was Thunderstruck, one of the stories of hers that I read and I really, really liked it. It actually really suits this room. Let's not lie. I already have the proof of it, which is a slightly different shade. I mean, imagine. So I will read this at some point. I'm pretty sure it was Thunderstruck and other stories that I read. Yes, it was. Anyway, um, I like those um, short stories. I am intrigued to try a novel by her. This could easily be a women's prize book. So yeah, I've got that one. And the other book that I got that I think is probably, I'm almost tempted to say I want to, I've had a few reading, well, I've had a couple of days over the past few years where I've managed to read a book in a day and really enjoyed it. And this I think I could read in a few hours. It's McGlue by Atessa Moshveg. And this is her debut. Apparently it's the most like that boner, which I really, really blinking loved last year. My number two book, or could have been number one on a different day. So yeah, I'm quite kind of in the mood to devour this because I've heard it's really gothic and quite dark. I just wanted to mention, I did already have this issue from Vintage, but I really, 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 really don't like the cover. I think it's horrible. And I know you don't see covers on the shelves, you just see spines, but I just think this is absolutely gorgeous. So I got this off eBay as it is an American um, edition. Now what I want to go and do is sort out the shelves downstairs because they are shocking. In fact, sort out that whole room if I can on my lunch break. And then it's back into meetings because I thought I had one meeting today and no others. Now, because I've been off for a while, my colleagues have very kindly filled my diary today. Uh, so that's going to be just what today is, lots and lots of meetings. And then tomorrow, off to Birmingham for a team away day. And part of it is our belated Christmas gathering because it got cancelled because of the train strikes. And we're going to be doing escape rooms. So that's going to be exciting. But that's tomorrow, not for now. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Bye for now. Hi everyone, it is now gone, just gone five, and I have logged off for the day, and now I'm going to sort out this room. That, I think, is the plan. Yes. Yes, it is. And it's nearly seven o'clock, but the room is done. 
Hooray! Hi everyone, it is quite late, so I'll just quickly let you know that I have finished all the lines. I'm gonna make it really nice, you can't see the cover properly. McGlue, which it's all about McGlue, who may or may not have killed a man, who may or may not have been his best friend. And we follow him as he sort of is sobering up to everything quite literally. And we get these sort of glimpses of partly on the boat where he's been told he's he's done this murder and then in Salem in a jail but we also go on some of the journeys that he's been and I don't say this often but this is a book where the ending makes everything make sense and smacks you with huge emotional wallop that you didn't think was coming and yeah I thought it was incredible I wasn't I wasn't not not sure but I was a bit like mm, this is okay and then it was literally that final paragraph and I was just like, oh, oh my God. So yeah, I can't really say more than that because it's short, it's sharp. And like I says, says, like I says, it hits you with a real emotional wallop. Anyway, I'll talk about it more in a wrap up. I have to get to bed early-ish because I have a very early start tomorrow at 5am. I will speak to you all. Well, probably not then because it'll be darker than darker than darker than dark it'll be practically the middle of the night is it five well five thirty i think i've got up give her up five thirty i think i've got to get up not that i like to make a mountain out of more hell good morning everyone <coughs> it's very early well it's 6 51 a.m yeah. chris is driving me to the station it's wednesday the 11th of january any other information i need to give them right now where are you going sir? i'm going to birmingham we going to birmingham i'm going to be going to a team away day so meetings all morning about like the plan for the company i work for oh. the charity i work for and then we're in the afternoon it's our christmas related festivities because of the train strike so we're going to do an escape room will i escape i hope so oh i might also be having mowgli afterwards with test 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 what you didn't get a kiss you've been too naughty Getting some content to us. Content! One is the video footage that we were here. Although Tess would rather be on her phone than uh, eating with me. Yeah. Oh, Millie. Happy I'm home. Oh. Oh, you little flirt. Mildred. Oh. this one. Oh. Mm. That's some good PR. Oh, it's practically a zoo here today. We've got squirrels, we've got foxes, we've got magpies. Loxy, the fox, has moved, but they are in very close danger because he's actually between those two red terracotta pots uh -oh. oh there's even now a wood pigeon i mean it's absolutely wild on the wirral wild hi everyone it is now thursday the no it's not it's friday the 13th tomorrow uh oh it's thursday the 12th 
of January. Do you care what day it is when I'm vlogging? Let me know if it's something that you like to know or if you don't really care about, that would be, well, that's the opposite of like you know, isn't it? Um, then that would be really, really helpful. Anyway, yesterday I was in Birmingham for a team away day with the charity that I work for two days a week, Libraries Connected, where I have been for quite a while now. I was project manager on BBC Novels That Shaped Our World Libraries Programme, which was a really big, massive programme of events all around England, uh, celebrating the list of 100 novels that shaped our world that the BBC came up with. And then I went on to be a consultant for the reading agency from Libraries Connected on Story Trails, which was where we went around 15 libraries across the UK and Northern Ireland, collated stories from people that people might not know about that place, turned them into augmented and virtual reality, and then went back to all those places with this kind of digital circus, including a screen that was round and made it feel like you were in a 3D uh, video without wearing 3D glasses and storytelling and all that wonderful stuff happened and lots of community workshops and everything and now I'm there as project manager of the Universal Libraries offer and there's four of them there is reading there is digital and information there is health and well-being and there is also um, creative and cultural as well as share the vision which looks at how libraries can do more initiatives around people who are partially sighted or blind or yeah it's it's really 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 exciting stuff all of it and all of it combines to help create initiatives that get libraries to try things differently, to get to bid for funding, to get to do new programs and projects and get staff to have like development, but also really benefit the communities around those libraries. So it's really, really exciting to be doing that two days a week. And we were there yesterday in Birmingham, having a team away day, because we're all over the country, catching up and then sort of looking at the plan for the next few years, but also going and doing an escape room, which we all failed, we had two teams and both of us failed. We both got nuked, which I thought that was quite extreme, frankly. Me and Tess then went out and had Mowgli and more of a catch up, so that was lovely. I also went to Foils, which I'll talk about in a little bit because I did buy books. But before that, I wanted to tell you about what I was reading. And it was actually Tess that influenced me to read this because um, I had got her a signed copy of Malibu Rising by Dave by Daisy Jones as a treat and Tess loved it. I love Carrie Soto and then Tess was talking about Daisy Jones and the Six and how much she was loving that she got it from the library. I was like, oh my goodness, it's on the telly soon, I should read it. I started it on the train yesterday and I'm already that far through. There's something about Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing that is just like, you just want to inhale it and you don't want to stop. And what I think is particularly great about, I mean, I enjoyed Carrie Sosa very much and the fact that she made me interested in tennis matches in a book was quite something. Here, she does something very different in the fact that it kind of reads like scripts. So you've got, I mean, loads of you have read this already, so I feel like I'm sort of preaching to the converted, but it's done through scripts. And at first I was like, this isn't gonna work. I'm not gonna be able to work out whose voice is who and how am I gonna get to know the characters really well. But honestly, it's so great. It's all about Daisy Jones and about a band who get together called The Six, who then end up doing a duet with Daisy. And then as far as I've got to now, they've sort of, be Daisy's become part of the band, despite Bill, the lead singer's kind of hesitance. And we get to know all these characters and all their flaws quite early on. And it's just so brilliantly done because the way the conversation goes, somebody will say one thing and then, the the other person won't necessarily refute it, but you'll hear a different spin on it or a different way that they took an, an, a certain situation. And I'm absolutely hooked. And there's also this brilliant thing, I think, that Taylor does where the world is so vivid, the characters are so like, how they say things or how they describe each other or how you get a collective description of one person builds these characters just so brilliantly and I'm really really loving it and uh, yeah absolutely devouring them. I should say I have the uh, American edition which I actually prefer. I think the American covers compared to the UK covers are just I don't know this I don't know if these covers 
I like the font by the way, but I don't know if they do the books sort of a disservice because they, it looks quite commercial. And that one I feel is a bit more like rough around the edges, which this book kind of is. Anyway, so there's that. <sighs> I bought a few books. So I bought three hardbacks in the Foils Half Price Sale. The first of which is The Furrows by Namwali Serpil. And I've been wanting to read this ever since I saw it on Obama's best books of the last year. And so I was like, oh, I'd quite like to read some of there. And this was there, so I got that one. Then we have Black Cake, which I've been meaning to read for ages by Charmaine Wilkerson. And this is not only a signed edition, but look at the spreads on that one. I just think it's gorgeous. I've got a feeling I'm gonna really, really love this. I have the proof. I'm gonna read that and then I can leave this nice and lovely. And then I picked this one on, on a bit of a whim because I read this author's poetry collection or one of their poetry collections and really, really loved it. And I never read their debut novel, but this sounded like it was quite me. It's The Falling Thread by Adam O'Riordan. And I haven't heard anyone talk about this. It's a Victorian historical novel set in Manchester. And that's kind of what I need to say. I think it's about a maybe a lord or someone quite high up in society who goes after a governess and it's what follows on from there. And I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna give it a try. Part of me was like, oh, maybe I should wait for the paperback. And then I saw it only came out in November and it was half price, which was less than the paperback would be anyway. So I picked it up. I also, speaking of paperbacks, bought two books that weren't in the sale, but I just, I couldn't leave without them. The first of which is Sula. I absolutely loved reading The Bluest Eye. My first book of the year was The Bluest Eye. I absolutely loved it and so want more Toni Morris in my life. This is a second novel and I'm going to read them in order so couldn't leave without this one. And I have seen so many of my favourite booktubers mention Clarice Lispector in their best books of the year wrap-ups that I was like I really need to actually read some Clarice Lispector. And I will admit, I do have one of her novels, but I spotted this in a section where they have the um, Penguin Modern Classics and thought, actually, this is the perfect way in, I think, or could be. And it's the complete stories of Clarice Spector. Now, I did check with lovely Nathan over at Nathan's Nook. Is it Nathan's Nook or Nathan's Book Nook? Nathan's Nook sounds slightly rude. Anyway, I'll link Nathan's channel down below because if you're not following him, you should be. He's fab. And um, he said that this was a great way in because he's read a lot of her work and that her short stories are fab. But he said, oh, it's a bit of a chunkster. But I think this is going to be perfect to have on the bedside table so that I can maybe read one in the morning before I get up and go to work or before I get up and do whatever on the days that I'm not working. And then one before I go to sleep. I think that could be a really nice thing to do. And then I'll get through them in however long it takes. So yeah, those are the books that I got. That was a bit of a catch up on what happened yesterday. And today I am going to be doing some reading for a prize, so I can't share what that is because obviously um, secrets, but I can't decide whether I want to try and finish this first and then start that book and read that on to tomorrow or whether I read that and then go back to this because I kind of just want to devour this all in one go, but at the same time I sort of want to spread it out. A tricky, tricky, tricky decision. So that's that. That's my catch up for now. Foxy Loxy is back. Very excited because it, we don't know whether it's a she or a he or a they, has, um, well, disappeared over sort of New Year. And I was really, really down. So it's like, oh, if it's here over New Year, that's a really good sign. Um, because I like to put silly amounts of weight on silly things that actually probably aren't that I was going to say fortuitous, momentous, aren't that mm, um, of what's to come. So there we are. That's my update. So I shall be back when I'm back. I've had the audacity of getting up, haven't I, Mildred? And you are not happy about it, my sweet grumpy princess.
So Loxy is back. I'm trying to work out whether Loxy is a boy or a girl. And apparently if they have slim V-line heads, they are girls. And if they have broader W-like heads, they're boys. It's just showing off by, it's sorry, it's showing off currently by uh, having a little scratch. The other way that you can tell apparently is through the colour of their scrotum. Now one, no wild animal's gonna, not going to let you get anywhere near its scrotum. Two, I don't think it's ever been in a position where it isn't scrotum. So I'm secretly hoping now, suddenly, it'll move and maybe there will be a scrotum and maybe there won't. Isn't this exciting for you? Oh, he's spotted me. It's spotted me. She's spotted me. Honestly, I just think it's the most good. Oh, gorgeous thing. Are we going to get a reveal? Oh, is there a scrotum there or not? Oh, that suggests there was white around the bum. There was white around the bum. Well, that's open to interpretation. I'll leave it all to you if this doesn't get taken off. Hi everyone, it is latish on Friday the 13th. It's about 22 six and shortly off to go to the cinema to go and see Megan and then go to Rudy's Pizza for some lovely sourdough pizza or that. I might have a salad. I know, who am I? I might have some starters at the cinema. Um, I have finished my work book or the book I was reading for work. So that's all good. I haven't finished or read any more of Daisy Jones and the Six. So I'll probably head to that when we get back or tomorrow morning. So that's that. It's been lots of fox action, as you'll have seen. Um, but that's my reading update. I had a big meeting with the production company about something potentially exciting. We'll update when I know more, if I know more, if I get it. And yeah, very excited about Megan though. Really excited from the trailer. I'm just hoping the trailer isn't all the best bits. <laughs> <laughs> it won't stop blinking raining you can barely see anything out the window for the rain absolute scenes of rain it's raining it won't stop raining Hi everyone, it is now Sunday. I have not filmed anything vloggy really since Friday. That was only very short. Please excuse the tumble dry going on, but Sunday is washing day. Went and saw Megan on Friday and it was absolutely brilliant. What I loved about it most was it knew how daft and dark it was and really embraced that. And we were in the Everyman Cinema and people were laughing, people jumped. It was just, you were really involved in it because it knew what it was doing. And I thought that was really, really clever. So if you're looking to go and see something that's a bit jumpy, a bit daft, kind of looks at, if you want to look for the layers in it about, you know, everyone needing the newest thing, but also the fact that through digital kids are becoming lonelier and digital is there there for them and it's this kind of cycle go and go and see it i'm really hoping there is a megan too uh yeah i just thought it was really 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 good fun so that was friday I went out for delicious pizza afterwards though i chose the wrong pizza i hate when that happens i must remember i love pepperoni and honey and anytime it's on a menu for pizzas i should just have it for some reason i went on some rogue vegetable assortment that I thought I fancied but I actually didn't and um, so that was Friday then also did some work reading did more yesterday and that's going to happen on and off because I'm judging the uh, Christopher Bland prize for the Royal Society of Literature so until we have our shortlist which obviously I don't need rereading I have to keep those quiet for now but I'll be able to talk about them once we, once we pick those I'm judging that I don't know if I said with the lovely Mina Kandasame and also the the fabulous um, Lem Cizé and I'm really really looking forward to um, working with them on that and getting to have meetings with them and chatting about books and stuff I think that's going to be really really fun. Speaking of books, last night I did my first event of the year with Charlotte Vassal for The Other Half and this book I read 
secretly last week um, and really really enjoyed but didn't want to film I don't think I'm going to film books that I'm reading for events unless I'm like 100% sure I'm going to love them this cover doesn't do this book well I think the cover does the book a disservice because actually it's a really brilliant crime novel about so many different things like race class uh, art um, oh, there's just so much going on here and because of the cover it looks a little bit chick litty I think and at the first chapter I was like oh I'm not sure it's lots of posh people that I find really odious but you really begin to love to hate them and I think that's the well I know I haven't spoken to Charlotte that's the intention so this I thought was really 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 good fun and reminded me that I do love a good crime and I really really want there to be more and thankfully Charlotte said last night there will be but I um, didn't film anything because Chris wasn't with me so didn't have my cameraman to hand and then speaking of reading before I talk about where we've been today well you can really hear my jeans going for it in there can't you I'm trying to get everything ready because I'm off to London tomorrow uh, for 48 hours. Anyway, um, I haven't finished Daisy Jones and the Six because like I said, for the last couple of days I've been doing work reading. I'm gonna head back to this today uh, because I have no plans this afternoon whatsoever. We're just gonna chill, we're gonna have a nice pie and roast veg for tea and watch a couple of episodes of Downton and the latest episode of Happy Valley, which I'm obsessed with and kind of partly gutted that it's not dropping all in one go and you have to wait until the next Sunday, but also loving the fact that it paces it out. Now, we have been out already today. Let's go and get an M&S pie that I really, really love. And while I was in M&S, I got this, a lovely pink rose, because I really, really love roses. And I invariably have, there's some currently there and I'm sure you've seen them when I've filmed and stuff. There's no, normally some on the table next to the armchair in here. But I thought actually having a proper rose plant would probably be, would probably be better for, well, it's better financially, it's better for the planet. I can grow this and see what happens with it. And um, yeah, so that was very, very nice. And then we went to TK Maxx and I was, I can't remember what, what I was looking for. I think a thermos, I actually have regretted not getting some really, really warm, cozy socks I saw there. But I saw, I don't know if this ever happens to you, I saw a couple and roll this rug. Don't need a rug particularly, but I saw it and I thought, oh God, they're gonna buy it and I really, really want that and I'd be really sad if they buy it. They decided they didn't like it, so I swooped in. And now, look at this. How gorgeous is that? That's gonna go in the dining room. It's just lovely and it's only 30 pounds. And I do love that. And also with TK Maxx, once it's gone, it's gone. So um, yeah, I felt really, felt really smug that I've got that. So that's been what's been going on this morning. It's just been a, TK Maxx M&S run, episode of Downton with Breakfast. And then, like I said, I think I'm just gonna read this this afternoon. And then I think I'm probably gonna start the Patreon book club book next. I was gonna read Kate Atkinson's Shrines of Gaiety, and that actually would have been quite good because I'm gonna be staying in Soho, um, and it's set in Soho. So we'll see, maybe I'll waver a little bit. But um, it is book club on Wednesday, and I saw Laura, who's one of my patrons, who's part of the Patreon, what well, is on the Patreon book club tier, and she was saying how much she was looking forward to it. I was like, oh my goodness, I've realised I've not even read the book yet. I'm trying not to overthink and overplan, and yet I still am so easily swayed by that. Anyway, that noise is probably really annoying, so I'm going to go because you've had it for six minutes. I will catch up with you probably when I finish this. Oh, that rock. Oh, that cheese selezione. <laughs> what the bloody oh. hell have I let myself in for? <laughs> Morning everyone, I thought I would try filming in this spot, which I don't very much, but with my lovely curvy swervy chair um, with there's the cheeky bottom for those of you who've been wondering where it's gone and um, there is one of the fire dogs which you don't see or the fireplace very often this is quite a nice spot for recording it maybe anyway I am very excited as I'm off to London later this morning I'm going to be seeing my best mate since I was four Polly which is really really cool but I wanted to let you know before all of that that I finished Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid five star read for me i absolutely blinking love this and i've said before i really struggle with books around art and music and sport and i've now read a book of hers about sport and a book of hers about music i don't think she's done one about art but if you're up for the challenge taylor jenkins read please do so i'd lap it up because 
I honestly think there's some sort of like fiction crack going on <laughs> with <laughs> work because I just like I know I had a few gaps because I was reading for the things but as soon as I picked this up straight back with all the characters straight back into it the way it charts the rise of this band which I think has links to Fleetwood Mac and the the breakup and the fallout from there and looks back at it several years on I just thought was brilliant I love the way it's written in that sort of script style which like I said I didn't think would work but totally did I totally knew whose voice um, was whose I totally got to see all of these characters from so many different angles that it built this like amazing picture of them. I loved the songs being in the back. I can't wait for the TV show. I didn't realise it's Elvis's granddaughter playing Daisy Jones in the show, so that's going to be interesting. Anyway, a little Hollywood gossip aside there. I just thought this was absolutely brilliant and I just love the worlds that, that she creates and how there's something very, I think it's very hard to write a book that will appeal to a huge audience, and she does, and she does it so well. These have that kind of pace to them, yet they're brilliantly, brilliantly written, like the pace is at no expense of the prose, and yeah, I just think, I think she's phenomenal, Taylor Jenkins Reid, so far. I'm looking forward to reading, um, the other two in this sort of universe that she's created that I haven't read yet. And this was actually very kindly sent to me, I think, by a lovely lady called Shirley. And um, it's signed, it says Simon Rock On. And this is before I had had the pleasure of meeting Taylor and interviewing her about um, Carrie Soto last year. So there we are. That is my report on that. I need to show you what book I'm going to take. I'm a li little bit all over the place. I've got a bit of a headache this morning and my face is sort of hurting around here. I can't work out if I'm getting a spot or if my sinuses are playing up, which is not ideal, but we'll see how we get on. But I'll be back in one second when I've got the book that I'm going to be packing to take with me, although I am planning on going to foils again. Sorry, it took me a while to find it. It's because I've got two copies of it. I've got like a really nice hardback with black spreads, um, and then I've got this one, which is um, the copy that I bought of Alias Grace by Margaret, which is what I'm going to read next. Oh, look, I'm slightly teeming with the theme um, that I got. I think in the old charity, yes, the tire shop where they used to do a book for fifty p a go, or you could get was it like ten for a five, or does that work out right? No, it might have been ten for like. Four pounds. Anyway, it's one of those ones that invariably got me into the habit of having a huge TBR. There we go. I am um, really, really looking forward to reading this. This is the pick for my Patreon book club, which happens monthly and will be on Wednesday. So yeah, I need to get cracking with it. And I'm just excited to like head to a big old chunkster and back to some of Margaret Atwood's sort of older works really so yeah that's what I'm going to be packing with me but like I said I'm going to be going to foils and possibly doing some more damage we will see uh, but I need to get ready I need to get changed I need to have a shower and all sorts anyway I'm waffling away I do feel a little bit bleh, but let's see how we go anyway I will catch up with you when I get there you don't know, I just have to go and buy a coat. I'm really happy with this. I think it is lovely. Um, so yeah, I'm here for work tomorrow. I'm gonna go out with my best friend of 37 years, Polly, later. But before that, I think I'm gonna hit foils where I'm also meeting Polly at six. And here's the lovely bathroom. As well as what people wanted out of trouble vlogs, they said a room tour and that it's pretty much what you've got, but I will sleep well in there. I've stayed here before. Ooh. And now, <laughs> cheers. 
Jones. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am back at the hotel after a lovely, lovely, lovely time with Polly. It's just like, when you've known someone for that amount of time, 36 years we worked here, it, it's, oh, I don't know, it's just a really, really special thing. Anyway, as well as new friendships can be super duper special too, but like, Polly knows where all the bodies are. Anyway, um, I did go to foils, I did buy some books, and I thought I would share some of them with you, well, some of them, the three of them, with you now. Sorry, Love Island is on in the background. I've got a feeling I'm going to be hooked, which is not good for my reading time. Anyway, first up is The Night Circus and Other Stories by Ursula Kowalik. And these are short stories, and I was drawn to this because the cover looks like Dorothy Slippers from The Wizard of Oz, and that sort of got me. And it says that they're blending the naturalistic and the fabulous, and the fabulistic, sorry, these elusive, delicate stories fold fable and fairy tale into everyday domestic settings of kitchen, garden, car. I'm really, really, really excited by it. Very slight, but I think it's going to be great. And from Parthian books. I've not read anything by Frages. It's also translated by Julia and Peter Sherwood from uh, what did it say? Because sometimes they don't. No, it doesn't. Um, she is from Slovakia. So, yeah. There we go. Then I also got The Communist Daughter, which is also translated, I think. It's by Aroa Moreno Duran. Now, I say it's translated, I might be lying. I think it was translated from Spanish. It is by Katie Whitmore. And this is all um, about a young girl who's grown up in Berlin and it looks at the Berlin Wall and I am really keen to go to Berlin at some point and so I thought this could be good to read while I'm there. This came out I think last year. I've heard nothing about it. It's from Tinder Press but I do feel a bit like I feel a bit like, unless you're Maggie O'Farrell, in the press don't really care. I feel like they did a real disservice to Sarah Schmidt last year, which I'm a bit cross about. Anyway, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm intrigued for this one. And again, something quite short and sharp. And last but not least, I picked this because it's introduced by Monique Rofi. And that cover is amazing. It's No Pain Like This Body by Harold Sonny Ladue. And apparently it is a... Um, classic, or it says actually one of the greatest Caribbean novels ever written. And that was enough to make me want to. I absolutely loved Monique's um, The Mermaid of Black Conch. It was the Costa winner of the year that I judged the overall winners. And um, yeah, I'm really, really keen to get some more Monique Rovi actually as well. So those are the books of all. Hi everyone, so it is now, believe it or not, nearly two weeks since I last filmed a clip for the video that you've just watched. It's Editing Simon. It is now Sunday the 29th, I think it is, of January. After that clip, after possibly one of the worst train journeys I've ever, well not even train journeys, I was sort of stuck at Euston for five hours when no trains were leaving or very few were coming in or leaving. And oh, it was just horrific. I almost burst into tears like twice because I was also feeling super duper ill and it turned out I did have sinusitis. I got really, really sick, then felt a bit better by the weekend, made the foolish uh, decision of going to the sea, although it was lovely. I'll insert that here. Or nature's diffuser. Anyway, hello. If we had come for a marine lake walk in West Kirby, because might help my sinuses. If we just step apart, Chris, let's see where the path goes. Oh dear. What was it? What is it that Gandalf would say? You shall not pass. So we can't do that, but we're going to pop to West Kirby Buckshire. I actually quite like my hair like this. It's just so. Nature's like way. Hair. I'm warm.
Then that made it worse. Apparently cold air and sinusitis is not a good combination. And anyway, I managed to get an emergency out of hours appointment with a doctor who told me I had acute sinusitis, which I took as a compliment, frankly. I've been on antibiotics since and I'm slowly getting better. I've been much more myself today and getting ready to get back to work and stuff next week. But I thought I'd have a quick catch up with you. As, I, as you all have seen, I went to the seaside, popped into the wonderful West Kirby bookshop where I bought this. The chaos here is about to be sorted. I just thought I'd sit and talk because so I've just almost finished editing that vlog and now this is next on my list of to-dos. Um, but I bought three books when I was in there. Um, the first of which is an unlikely purchase for me. It seems odd that I'm doing this actually because I'm going to film a haul in the next couple of days. Um, but I bought Kick the Latch by Catherine Scanlon, which has got horses on it and is about horse racing. And I've said ever since way, way, way back in time when I started my blog, Savage Reads, that I've really struggled with books with horses because I have a real problem with horses. They know too much. They just know too much. Anyway, I've recently acquired a few different books with horses on the cover and I feel like that could be quite a fun themed reading vlog um so yeah let me know what your thoughts are on that but anyway i picked that one up i've heard it's amazing it got a rave in the shop and also it's in vignettes there's one here about hamburgers then i picked up where i end by sophie white which i nearly bought when i was with polly in foils i had actually almost bought it the, the same day earlier on, didn't. And then when I was in foils and Polly was getting as a um, second pot of tea because we're wild, uh, I had seen somebody saying how amazing it was. I was like, I must get it, I must get it. And then I didn't manage to on the way out. But I have bought it since in um, West Kirby Bookshop. And I'm really excited for this. It's set on an island, I think, and is about a woman who was sort of left by pirates, I think. So it sounds intriguing, this one. And like I said, I've seen a few raves of this on Instagram. That was where I saw it when I only bought it last week, if that made sense. And last but not least, I've got The Book of Desire by Mina Kandasambi, who, as I think I mentioned earlier, I am judging the Christopher Bland prize with, along with Lem Cizé. And so I thought, oh, I must read this. And this is poetry that has been translated. And I'm really, really intrigued. It's Nina Kandasamy's luminous translation of the Kamatupapal, a 2000 year old song of female love and desire. And I just think it's gonna be incredible. I'm really tempted to read that very, very soon. And then, reading front. So I have been filming a reading vlog since Thursday when I started to feel better about 24 to 48 hours after the antibiotics kicked in. Um, but I have not yet read Margaret Atwood's Alias Grace. It is book club, Patreon book club, a week on Wednesday and we're doing this and Jessica Owl's A Cold Feeling of Snow? Something Feeling of Snow? that cold enough for snow that's the one anyway um so yeah but i am gonna head to this when i'm feeling a hundred percent better because i feel like this is going to take some concentration what i did do i did get that far in where you can get up to my book up i'm reading bookmark i got 33 pages into chapter four and i was really really enjoying it but i was just too poorly i couldn't concentrate so that is this vlog wrapped up I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to leave you with some footage of Loxie, the garden fox, who sadly I haven't seen now for about 10 days, but has brought me so much joy so far this year when he was about, and I thought it'd be nice to leave some joy for you. I am umming and ahhing about possibly seeing if I can volunteer for a fox, um, what do you call it, rescue centre that there is actually on the world, which I think would be like amazing to do. Because I do, I have a real thing for it, so I'm actually being seeing whether I should get a um, like fox to go next to my bear on my arm because I've become smitten and I'm watching endless amounts of videos of people who have foxes living in their houses. It's all part of my recuperation. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. Leave me a fox emoji in the... Um, comments below. No need for any comments on sinusitis or tips for sinusitis. The internet did me a bad one telling me to go and get fresh air. So I am now only taking advice from doctors. 
for they are doctors. Anyway, uh, yeah, I hope you're all doing super duper well and I will see you with the book haul very, very soon. And there's going to be a wrap up soon too. I know what has happened to me, but I've read some corkers in January. I can't quite believe it's going to be February soon. I really am going now. Fox in the description box. If you let know, <laughs> Fox in the comments below if you can. And also let me know if you're bothered about dates and stuff and anything you'd like to see in vlogs. Um, because for the example, the next one is very much a home-based one because I ain't been going nowhere, but I am about to start traveling around the UK and indeed further afield over the forthcoming weeks. So yeah, let me know all of those thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you soon. Bye.